Good afternoon, welcome to the Market Wrap for APW, week ending 19th of uh, November 2021. Stuart Williamson here at the helm, APW. So this week, episode 76, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about uh, rental markets and what the five-year view is according to Savills and Zoopla. Why are we doing this? We do it as an information forum, basically to try and get bite-sized information to you our average expatriate or international investor who hasn't got time to do the reading because working 12 hours a day or more, as many people do, means that you don't have time to do it. So we're going to try and give it to you on a regular basis. So please do subscribe. It'll help us cir our circulation. It'll help people see us. This year, this last week, we've got 42 likes so far, which is great. Thank you. And another 15 subscribers. So carry on if you can, please. OK, so Savills 2021 residential forecast for the next five years they say it looks like a soft landing price growth will continue next year but much lower than we've seen of late why is that because the current burst of inflation is 4.2 percent as of yesterday they were talking about it in the uk will bring interest rates up and put the brakes on okay we accept that we you know we discussed that last week okay but why won't that lead to a crash because number one, interest rates are incredibly low. Average rate for a five year fixed rate mortgage, 75% loan to value is 1.29% in the UK, not as an expat. Offshore, you know, we're looking at probably 1% plus on top of that. For buyers with more equity, lenders are falling over each other to offer five year rates well below 1%. Fantastic. Secondly, vast majority of mortgage homeowners are protected from rising rates because they're on a fix. 93% uh, mortgage uh, mortgage borrowers have locked into low fixed rates and a major proportion of those is five years or more unemployment looks to have been contained you know the furlough finished last week and basically we have 1.2 percent of all mortgages in the uk on the outstanding loan book now i do think you know employment is it is low unemployment sorry is low uh, um, but i do think now that furlough is finished you'll have a lot of employers who will be looking at their staff as they come back and go, you know, we've gotten pretty well without them. Do we really need them? Which is obviously sad, but you know, it's free market economy and that may well happen. So I think, I think unemployment will go up a little bit. Housing supply is super low. The Rick's housing market survey suggests that though demand has softened, supply coming to the market is even more constrained. That means under supply will continue to characterize the market going into 2022. 20 CI data suggests uh, supports that in a three months of September 2021, the level of new stock on the market was 12% below that seen in more, no more normal market conditions of 2017 to 19. Meanwhile, the number of agreed sales is 26% higher. Okay, so I will say based on this capacity for price growth is sensitive to the speed and scale of interest rate rises. So price growth is, is sensitive and it, it won't be great if interest rates go up heaps. But what Sam was saying with their um, their anticipated returns over the next five years, they see interest rates rising twice in 2022, ending at 1.5% at the end of 2026. In these circumstances, using their experience, their analysis of the market, their analysis of past performance, they expect the following, and this is the money shot. Average UK house prices to rise by 13.1% over the next five years. Growth beyond that would limit the, pro limit the profile of people able to buy with a consequential impact on longer term transaction volumes. So basically, if it goes up by more than that, it'd be getting too expensive and getting out of uh, income increases. So you can have a, a stalling like we've seen in London. And London has stalled because it's got too expensive. They believe it will not be uniform growth though with the strongest across the markets of Wales, Scotland, and the north of England. Northwest, Yorkshire, Humber, Wales, and North East should rise at about 18%. East Midlands, West Midlands, Scotland, about 16%. And the Southwest at 13, South East at 10, and London at 5%. They also believe the North-South dividing house prices is gonna close further over the next five years with natural progression as it's occurring, but also because the government's levelling up agenda will push people. I mean, I heard this week that, excuse me, that um, the BBC have 59% of all its 
corporate spend was in London and they've been informed that they should reduce that to 25%. So consequently, they're opening up in Birmingham, they're opening up in quite a few places across the north. So that's the difference between the two. Basically, you've got levelling up, so you're going to get the house prices coming up to match where we are with um, the R in London compared to the rest of the, the rest of the world. The price growth looks poor in the London market, which has become increasingly confined to more affluent households. This reflects the extent to which London prices became dislocated from the rest of the UK housing market from 2005 to 2016. In addition, housing supply in London remains way below actual needs. What are the, now, what are the views on the rental market? Beyond the rent rebound that's going on at the moment, they expect rents to resume their long-term correlation with income growth. That means they expect UK rents to rise by 19.9% over the next five years. That's a great figure. As a buy-to-let investor, if we're going to go up by 20% in rent over the next five years, that's going to way jump past interest rate increases. So that's keeping us in properties washing their face zone. In London, we expect rental growth, they say, in 2022 to, to regain the lost ground it's had since 2020, boosting the five-year outlook. Therefore, we expect rents to be 22% higher in London by the end of 2026. So what does Zoopla say about this? So let's cross-reference it with other you know, research people. Graham Gilmore, who's the head of research there, says, the stru structural undersupply of rental property across the UK amid higher levels of demand will underpin rental growth 2022 and forward. Their key points, key takeaways from it are strong rental demand in Q3 will push up to the highest level of rental growth for 13 years. UK rents are rising at 4.6% per annum amid, doubling, amid, amid demand doubling in the, in the major city centres. London rental growth is swinging back after 16 months of falls, which is what Savile said. Rental demand will remain high, higher than supply and the availability of properties to let is 43% below a, a five-year average. Even with rental growth, affordability of rents across the UK will remain in line with the five-year average at 37% of income. Rental growth in the UK ex London is at plus 6% and we expect this growth to ease to 4.5% by the end of 2022. So basically you've got a fantastic cocktail there of limited supply, lowish interest rates and rising rents which is going to help the market go up. So we're looking at potentially you know, across the UK, 13%, but in the markets, we're looking at a lot uh, around the 18%, 16% mark, which is fantastic for buyers now, and also fantastic for rental. Okay, so where does that put us in the market cycle? It should probably put us at the start of the recession phase. That's where we should be, but the figures seem to argue with that. So really, what do you do? You know, and uh, I speak to a, a chap during this week and he said, I don't know, well, I'll do some more analysis and this and that, and you've got some more questions. And um, so what do you do? Analysis by paralysis? Wait to buy at the right time? Or buy property now and wait for it to go up? And that's our own view. Okay, so that's a, basically a look at the research that's going on in the marketplace. Now, a while back, I was in Nigeria, and I was talking to some clients there about property. And I drove past a house on the way to um, do this meeting, and it said, house not for sale. And I got to the meeting and we had a good old laugh about it. House not for sale. How stupid is that? You know, because apparently people used to sell houses behind people's backs when they were out of the country. Well, that is now happening in the UK. In August, a man from Luton returned from working away to discover his house had been sold without his consent and all his furniture had disappeared. He arrived home following a call from a concerned neighbours saying that someone was in his house when he was met with a new, where he was met with the new owner of his property, also a victim of the scam. A criminal gang has stolen the true owner's identity and had made off with the profits of the sale. Now, apparently 99% of homeowners are at risk of having this occur to them in the UK because criminal gangs are going to the land registry and stealing people's, stealing people's uh, title deeds. It's called title deed fraud. Unless you put um, a special alert on this. And there's a free service Homeowners can register up to 10 properties at the Land Registry's Property Alert Service, and it doesn't cost anything. So do that, because otherwise at FPAC, expats, you might go home and find you haven't got a house there. There we go. That is the market report, the market wrap for 19th of November 
2021. Please do subscribe and like if you can. I look forward to speaking to you next week. Bye-bye.